Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video dedicated to the G3X Touch. And this being our second video is going to be getting into how I like to operate the particular unit, sort of how to get things set up, how to get the autopilot working, sort of all the uh, kind of day-to-day -day operations of the particular unit. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're sitting down here on the ground, uh, we're lovely uh, Western Connecticut here. We're gonna be taking a nice little trip down to uh, Waterbury, Oxford, KOXC, uh, which is a little bit, not, not too far from us. And I'm sitting here, my engine's leaned, I've got everything powered up, uh, we're looking pretty good to go. And now it's a good time to kind of get everything all squared away with my controls. So there's a lot of little things that we need to go ahead and kind of push all our buttons for to get sort of ready here. So one thing we need to think about, of course, is uh, being down here on the ground, we'll be getting the ADIS information. Uh, again, we'll deal with that when we get a little closer to Waterbury, Oxford, but of course, uh, setting up our unicom so we can communicate with the folks on the ground and everything along those lines. I also like to get my automatic pilot set up. I like to go ahead and set up my flight plan. All those components are what I like to do at this particular stage. Keep in mind in the real world, um, I wouldn't want to be sitting here on the ground just running the engine, but it's one of those things where you're waiting for clearances and stuff like that. It's always a good idea, especially if you have a co-pilot, which <laughs> backseater, uh, they would be taking care of some of that for you, hopefully, if you have one of those. Like I said, I'm actually gonna flip the fuel pump on, get a little tiny bit more pressure. So let's go ahead and walk ourselves through it. So first things first is going to be communication. Now let's say I'm on the ground and I don't know the communications frequency of the airport I'm currently at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and split my page here, and I'm gonna go down to my page for Waypoint. I'm gonna click it right there. And then all I have to do is dial in the name of the airport that I'm in. You can see right now we're in November 6 niner. So I'll just come in here, November, six, niner, enter. And what it will do is it'll bring up critical information about the particular airport. For example, you can see we're actually in a Stormville, New York. We're a little far away from Waterbury, but that's okay today. One of the cool things here is you'll see we have frequency information, we have runway information, and of course we have weather information. Oh, we have no weather data. Unfortunately, we have no notices to Airman or OPA and charts and stuff like that. Someday, someday. But one of the nice things we can see here is you can see very clearly that our runway today, just by taking a quick gander here, is going to be runway 24, which works well. And again, we'll have no frequency information here because of the fact we're this little rinky-dink and controlled sort of airport. But let's say we wanted to go ahead and find some information about our destination. So if I actually came up here, Kilo, Oscar, X-Ray, Charlie. You can see Waterbury, Oxford, enter. And now the cool thing here is, and I love this about this particular unit, there it is right there on the map, you can see that we actually have the ability, we can scroll around if we wanted to, um, you can actually go ahead and press the plus and minus. So if I wanted to zoom way, way in it, you can actually see that our main runways are 1, 8, and 3, 6 from here, uh, while we're kind of cruising around an autopilot, kind of a thing like that. So it looks pretty good. Again, I can press my little airplane to kind of center. Here's all my frequencies. Uh, one of my favorite things to do with this one is you observe that the ATIS frequency is already here. If I click on that ATIS frequency, it'll give you the ability to actually slam that frequency into my radio. So I always use ATIS for two. So if I press COM2, do you see how it armed that frequency in there? So now if I click on COM2, I can actually transfer that frequency and have it ready to go for me. So I can quickly snap over to it once I get a little bit closer to my destination. Uh, we're flying without flight following today. So uh, one of the things we'll do, of course, is we'll go ahead and get their tower frequency too. I'm going to go ahead and click on that sucker. I'm going to arm it. You can see it's ready to go 118.75 there, uh, ready to go. And that's going to be something we'll need to contact their tower once we get a little bit closer. Isn't that convenient? That's great, if you ask me. So we'll go ahead and sit here. That's looking pretty good. I like all that information. And now I like to go ahead and set up my flight plan. My flight plan couldn't be simpler today. Again, if I want to change page, I can use the outer right knob, or I can go ahead and click here, and I can go ahead and pick the active flight plan page. Now, when you're doing flight plans, uh, generally, there's a couple different ways to do it. If uh, you're being very easy and lazy, there's a button down here that says Direct To. And let me show you what happens when you operate that page. I'm going to press Nearest. Ha, ha wrong button. Direct To. And again, select Waypoint. I can click right here. And again, Kilo, Oscar, X-Ray, Charlie. I'm going to press the Enter key just like that. And you can see here, it's going to say, it's going to take us a 116 magnetic to get there. It's 27.4 nautic miles. Here's all the fun stuff. I can click on the Info page. I can also press Activate. Now, when you press that button, you will notice that my little uh, HSI down here has gone ahead and refreshed itself, and it's going to give me this little kind of line here, which will guide me towards my destination. Again, I could go ahead and split like this. I could go back to the map page like this, and et voila, you can actually see there's my magenta line of safety getting me over to my destination. The other option you have, of course, if we were to go to the active flight plan page, is we actually could have come in here and modified this. I can actually remove this if I want to, just like that. I could theoretically have dialed in my original airport here on November 6 niner. November 6, 9, or enter. And of course, I could do a kilo Oscar X ray Charlie, just like that. Uh, the advantage to that, of course, is it's going to give us a course that is a little bit smoother. And again, one of the things I like here is that you can actually click these and change them. You can set what time you're going to get there, how much fuel it's going to take. Isn't this great? This thing's fantastic. 
So again, I got my plan fuel, my plan speed, all that's kind of there. But you can see here, our first place we're gonna do, we can actually come in here and activate the leg. And the cool thing here is it will actually activate between where we are and where we're going, uh, which is a great little pro tip for you if you're looking for something to make your life a little bit simpler to do there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the back key. Um, that's fine. I know where I need to point my plane. Everything's good. I'm gonna adjust my barometric pressure. It's standard today, keep it simple. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all my other stuff as far as my cruise altitude is set, as well as my initial takeoff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my cruise altitude today. And there's a couple different ways we could do this. We grab this guy right here and I'll crank this up to our desired altitude. We're traveling east today, so 3,500 will work fine for us. And of course, I always like to take my heading and I like to set it to runway heading. And again, depending on uh, what you want to try to achieve, you can get all that stuff kind of queued up and ready to go. So I'm going to go snap it all the way over there. Now, of course, we're going to arm up our flight director. Remember, we can't use it under a thousand feet. They told us, again, we have to... Uh, Take advisory to any placards in the airplane, and that one's clearly advisable. So uh, that's a good piece of tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one, of course, and we can click on the flight director button, and you can see it's gonna pre-arm all of our different components. We also could have come down here and press FD, depending on what you'd like to do. So we're gonna be arming nav. Again, nothing's active until you push this button and turn the servos on, which we're not allowed to do. And you can also come down here and we can pre-select our alt, uh, which is pretty nice. We just have to say how we wanna get up there. For me, it would be IAS. And uh, the problem with hitting IAS here is it's a zero knots, so uh, what we'd have to do, unfortunately, is we'd have to sit here and go, ah, <laughs> da, da, da. you know, it would be nice if you could press an all, but if you look really carefully, you can actually use this to do it. <laughs> Middle mouse button, FTW. Now I notice here that my VY is 64 knots. So watch this. I can just go right up to 64 knots and I can lock my indicated airspeed to 64 knots. I can also get outs, which means it's armed and GPS is armed. Isn't that awesome? So I'm gonna go hit the back key. We're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this airplane rolling here and give it a little bit of power. And we're just gonna kind of get rolling. One thing I do have to do is go ahead and fix my mixture there. You can see I had it leaned for a groundwork here, which is the correct thing to do, by the way. Now what I'm gonna do is get myself over to the runway. A couple of taps of brakes there. And yes, everybody can see the gigantic yellow X. I think you all know what the yellow X means. <laughs> it means don't. <laughs> oh boy, breaking the law. Good times, full power, let's go. So what I like to do now is I like to go ahead and get myself uh, ripping down the runway here. Everything's looking pretty good. RPM's a little high. I guess my mechanic was uh, getting a little happy with that one when he was uh, configuring that for me. So I'll give him a little bit of a nudge. We get in the air, no landing gear. So I'm just gonna enjoy kind of cruising straight. We've got that nice synthetic vision down below me. And you can see automatically the aircraft is actually telling me what I should be doing in order to get my plane to do the stuff that I dialed into my automatic pilot. So if I go ahead and uh, take my little yellow line there, I'll go ahead and zoom in so you all can see. We actually can now fly with that and you can see very clearly there again a little bit of turbulence today there always is i swear it's attempting to maintain the settings that it gave it so at any point now by the way i can engage my automatic pilot servos and since i took my time you can see it's actually desperately trying to uh, basically balance itself get me all turned around lined up in the correct direction and it's going to turn really really hard to the right in a second and it's going to pitch up and it's going to be all over the place my lesson here is don't use autopilot <gasps> under a thousand feet <laughs> and you can see exactly uh, part of the reason for that. It is the world's most aggressive automatic pilot. It will succeed in getting us all squared away. Don't you worry, it'll do that. But uh, now we can go ahead and get some of our other chores all set up as we're kind of getting up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce, so slightly reduce power here for climb. We don't need to be ripping that hard. Again, no constant speed propeller on God's gray earth will ever give you the exact RPM that you asked for. It just doesn't do that. One thing I can see is I'm actually slightly out of rudder trim here, which is okay. And you can see we actually stabilized at the speed we selected. You can see we're charging up to our altitude. You can also see that the numbers for distance is starting to get smaller. So everything's actually working really, really well for us so far. Uh, this is a, a happy day, as I like to say, kind of a thing. And now we get a beautiful view of New York. Again, this is a very good autopilot. This is a very, very good system if you're trying to experience everything in VR. Uh, you'll have very, very little difficulty controlling your airplane like this. So what I'm going to do is get us up to cruise. There we go. And now we're just about at cruise. I'm going to let the nose of Joe. Okay, and lighten the seat. Too much, too much. So a good pro tip here, as everybody knows, go ahead and make sure your power is left at full so you can build up some cruise speed before you actually pull back the power to your cruise setting, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And now we're gonna be entering kind of the next phase of our little journey, which is going to be kind of getting ready for the actual, uh, kind of getting there, so to speak. And again, look at how fast this airplane accelerates. Man, does this thing move. So now we're pretty close to our cruise speed. We said about 122. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull my power back. We're gonna get 25 inches and we're gonna do 2,500 revolutions per minute, comrades. 
That yeah, looks pretty good, right about there. And again, it'll never be that close. So now this is a good time to take a look at how to lean the mixture in this particular airplane. So one of the cool ways to get to this menu, of course, if we wanted to be lazy, we'd come to menu. We could also press menu one more time. Uh, we could go through all this. You could actually scroll like this. Ooh, <laughs> you'll do that too, don't worry. We go all the way down here and then pick our engine page and like press flight controls, we get to this button. Again, we could do all of that, which seems like a lot of work to me. Or you could just take your mouse and click right there. So we can see right now, oh my gosh, what is with cylinder three whoopsies <laughs> i don't think we should be leaning our mixture that's not a good thing but uh, one of the nice things about this page of course is it's going to give us some critical information about our cylinders including the fact that this makes no sense 1490 that's uh, i'm just looking so your white lines here are going to be your exhaust gas temperatures and this little green bar right here is going to be referring to your cylinder head temperature one of the things i'm not quite sure i understand here is how could cylinder 3 be at 405 yet it's below the cylinder 395 remember our cylinder is good to about uh, 420 on the f scale so we're okay here even though um it seems a lot sketchier than it really isn't so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go ahead and lean out my mixture Doing this uh, couldn't be simpler. Uh, there's two ways we can do it. We can do it the old fashioned way. We can do it the easy way with the lean assist. So I'm gonna click on lean assist. And what that will do is that will allow us to go ahead and start leaning the mixture out. And what you're gonna observe is all these values are gonna start climbing. And again, look over here on my left and start pulling the sucker out. And they slowly, slowly start climbing. There they go. That's what I expected them to do. Now, because we're so low, there's not a lot of leaning I can do here. And again, I can pull this out a little more. We're going to get a little tiny bit more. You're going to see it peak. There it goes. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There it goes. Do you see how everything turned blue? We're now in lean assist mode. Now, what you'll notice here is all these values are blue and they're saying negative. The other thing you're going to observe is it gives us the peak values right at the top of each one of these boxes. That's awesome. Because what we can do now is uh, we're supposed to be doing, uh, we can go up to 25 past peak, or we can do 50 uh, rich of peak. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start pushing my mixture control back in. And you can actually watch my fuel flow comes up. You can also watch as my lean temperatures start to go down. So what's going to happen here is we're going to go past the peak, and then we're going to go past the peak in the other direction. So we're actually rich of peak right now. And you can see my gallons per hour are slowly rising here. And we're going to get to about 25. That looks pretty good to me. And success. Make sure you use your manufacturer's recommendations and not what I just did. Uh, one of the things you'll observe here is because we were so darn low, it's basically full rich still. Uh, again, we're very, very low and we're fuel injected. So that's going to be affecting kind of those elements of this journey. But you can see just how wonderfully handy that is. Now, of course, uh, if you remember, we were planning for 120 as well as uh, having significantly less power. Remember, we were planning for about 10%. Uh, I love this little gauge down here, kind of a thing like that. I can actually pull the throttle back. And you see how you can actually watch the power coming back? So if I go down to a 50% power, you can actually watch the total power setting right there drop. So if I'm looking for a specific one, oh, we have negative eight endurance, by the way. You might want to hit reset. <laughs> Add fuel, zero. We can actually set the amount of fuel that we're starting with and anything like that. This is very disturbing. But um, again, I'm not too, too worried about that uh, because we never reset it to begin with. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we wanted to reset it, we could actually go to weight and balance. And we could see we've got about uh, 22 plus 24. Uh, we need to add about uh, 24. It's about 50 gallons we need to add. I'm going to add 49 gallons. Press enter. And now once you've updated that, that will correctly show your endurance as something we should have done before. You can also see that it gives us an estimate of range. It's also giving us an idea of what our fuel economy is. And you can see even now, while well, we can definitely lean this thing a lot harder if we want to save a little bit of power. Of course, if we wanted to go back up to 55% power, we could just, just like that. And now we're cruising back at the previous power that we have it, just to give you an idea of just how slick that is. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit more, let's go back up to 25 inches here. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. 25 inches gets us about 58% power. So uh, we're moving pretty smoothly on our journey here. Now, to get rid of this page, of course, if uh, we don't want to look at this the entire flight, um, we can just come down here and we can just go ahead and press the back button. That's going to go ahead and reset everything so that it is uh, ready to go for us just like that. So this is a really, really slick system, and it's all very, very self-contained. Everything basically is going to work on kind of the way it wants. Now, one really cool piece that I like there is if you actually come down here and shut off nav mode, one of the things you're going to notice is we switch to roll, uh, which is going to hold this present heading. Uh, the reason this is very, very useful for us, of course, is if we're planning to do some type of approach or we're getting some kind of vectors, we can just quickly make the plane hold itself steady while we're going through getting all the different calculations and getting everything lined up, everything ready, maybe changing all the different stuff we need to do. Then we can come back here and we can flip the navigation hole back on and it'll actually recenter itself on the magenta line of safety. 
So the last thing we need to see, of course, is uh, landing. But uh, before we land, uh, we can see we're getting relatively close to our destination, about 12 nautical miles out. We actually got to give them a call. What I want to do is I'm going to check the ATIS. I'm going to put my COM2 real quickly here. Uh, we've already transferred the frequency, but the volume is uh, pretty quiet. So let's go back to my audio real quick. And I can go ahead and turn on COM2, just like that. Airport information, Echo 1300 Zulu. Wind 283 at 6. Visibility, Niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 1... 283 at what? Oh, that's lame. So the cool thing here is I can actually open up my nearest one. And you can see there, see how they're kind of chilling there? Airport number eight. Now, I don't even have to do that because I can come up here, transfer, and now I'm already on the frequency that we found when we're on the ground. So when I call them now, I can actually give them a ring and say, hey, I'm at 3,500 feet, 11 of the west. Uh, quest landing. 3,500 feet with echo to land. And they'll go ahead and read me the wind we just heard a minute ago. They're going to tell me to enter a left downwind for 3-6. Now, what they did is they instructed us to take a left traffic for runway 36. If you actually open this one up real quickly here, runway 36. Now, one of the things I love about the map is I can click and drag this. So I can actually visualize what it is that I need to do here. So I'm coming down along this magenta line of safety. I know I have to take a right turn, left, 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 to get myself down to the ground. And one of the things I always like to do, too, is if you do have a heading bug, you can actually grab that heading bug and you can adjust it so that it's going to point at your desired runway here. In which case, you can see just visually on a right here exactly what it is we need to do and of course so when we grab this over here we can crank this all the way to runway 36 which of course due north makes it nice and easy for us so it makes it much much simpler to kind of visualize exactly what we're doing now your brain might be doing some uh, gymnastics here because we're not tracking up uh, like i said we'll show you how to fix that later but the cool thing is it makes it much much easier to visualize exactly what it is i'm trying to achieve with a specific flight just by making those quick little adjustments and just a few minutes later, you can see that we're right up in the airport. I can go ahead and I zoom in all the way like I did. And I guess I actually got to start worrying about flying the plane. <laughs> Again, uh, one of the things that makes this plane a really, really good candidate for this is because it is a very, very easy to fly plane. There's very, very little drama in the handling and there's very, very little kind of excitement. But one of the things I love is uh, when you take a look at my map down there in the bottom right corner, you can see just how easy it is to get myself set up for that pattern. I can literally see my track versus the ground. Round. I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see. But you can see just how easy that is. Just right now we're just kind of flying. I can even basically instrument visual land this thing just by kind of playing this little game that I'm playing right here. And one of the cool things is it knows I'm trying to maintain 1,200 feet, so it does the best. Clear to land runway 36. Clear 36, red 6-4. Runway tree six. Nice. Now, the cool thing here is I'll go ahead and start backing the power out here. I'm going to go ahead and return my power. Oh, and lift the nose up. But look at how easy it is to fly your left base here. Oh, we can just kind of line ourselves up visually. There we go. There we go. You can see we're flying left base. I'm not even looking out the window, and I can see that I'm flying left base here. Pull that nose up just a wee bit. There we go. Let it just gently stabilize here. Of course, um, I'm a visual pilot, and you can see that I'm massively high here. I'll go ahead and pull my little flap handle back far. That is the way God intended flap handles, by the way. Just a handle. <laughs> None of this boop stuff you get, uh, like when you're flying like a Cessna. All right, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy my nice tight base here. This is more of a short approach than it is anything. I'm going to let my nose just sort of drop a little bit on my approach here. I'm going to pull this up, and you can see we are now all ready to go pretty good. Now we're just a wee bit fast here. I hope I shut the time acceleration off correctly. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> oh boy. Ooh, just coming in. Wow. That is Microsoft class turbulence there. I feel like the flaps aren't really doing anything. Just saying. This is a light airplane though. All right. Left wing down. Over the runway. We're going to let it drift just a little bit. Hold the nose up. A little bit of left foot. Whoop. Keep flying the plane. Keep flying the plane. And we are nice and down. Delightful. So as you can see, the G3X system is very, very, very effective. Uh, it gets us very, very easy, very, very quick navigation. But it is also very customizable. But that is going to be reserved for the next video. Enjoy.